Good evening, Gustavo. Good evening, Eduardo. Hi, good evening, teacher. How are Hi. you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. What about you? How was your day? I'm fine. Thank you. Did you have a good day at work? Um, yes, I had a good day. Awesome. No <laughs> complaints. <laughs> Positive attitude. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, so today I think that we're going to finish the section number five and tomorrow we will go ahead and make a review and also to complete the final exam and um, clarify some doubts or questions that you may have about the topics that we have developed in this section. So I would like to start by sharing the screen and the video on the platform. This is a very important topic, which is about the um, pronunciation of negative contractions in English. So let me share my screen to listen and check that video. Hi, everyone. In this class, you learn to sound natural when expressing contractions. Let's get started by analyzing the contractions on this chart. Aren't, weren't, don't, can't. Two syllables. Isn't, wasn't, doesn't, didn't. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. I don't like coffee, and she doesn't like tea. These aren't their swimsuits. They can't swim. He wasn't here yesterday, and he isn't here today. A quick tip to follow when expressing contractions is to extend the N. For example, I can't. They weren't. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to listen and repeat the contractions until you feel comfortable pronouncing them. Let me stop sharing and I'm going to play the recording so that you can repeat the negative contractions. Page 102, Exercise 4, Pronunciation, Negative Contractions, Part A, Listen and Practice. One syllable. Aren't. Weren't. Don't. Can't. Two syllables. Isn't. Wasn't. Doesn't. Didn't. Let's repeat one more time. Recuerden el tip que vimos en el video de la plataforma que era extender un poquito la N para que pues la negación sea más clara, ¿verdad? Que estamos haciendo una negación. Page 102, Exercise 4, Pronunciation, Negative Contractions, Part A, Listen and Practice. One syllable. Aren't. Weren't. Don't. Can't. Two syllables. Isn't. T wasn't. 
doesn't, didn't. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and practice these contractions, negative contractions in sentences. As you see, we have four sentences, which are the same that you already saw in the video. We are going to play the recording. I'm going to stop the recording uh, in a period, and then you're going to repeat. Page 102, exercise four, part B. Listen and practice. He didn't eat dinner because he wasn't hungry. I don't like coffee, and she doesn't like tea. This isn't my swimsuit. I can't swim. They weren't here yesterday, and they aren't here today. Page 102, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and practice. He didn't eat dinner because he wasn't hungry. I don't like coffee, and she doesn't like tea. This isn't my swimsuit. I can't swim. They weren't here yesterday, and they aren't here today. Okay, that was just one of the pronunciation practices that we have for today. And we have another one in the next video where we're going to watch it and listen to the grammar topic that we're going to be discussing and also the conversation. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn to ask and answer WH questions with did, was, and where. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, Where Did You Grow Up? Let's listen and practice. So Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there too. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. So why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. And I love it. Look, what do you think? Well, uh... Now, let's analyze how to form questions with did, was, and where. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. When did you come to Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles in 1990. Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. How old were you in 1990? I was 18. What was your major in college? It was drama. How was college? It was great. I would like to point out that the key to understanding this topic is to not get confused with the following question. When do I use did and when do I use was or where? You must remember the following. You will use was or where 
whenever you need to ask something related to the verb be. And you will use did for all the rest of the verbs in English. Now, let's analyze the questions and answers. We've already covered both of these topics. What we're doing now is presenting them together, hoping that it's not confusing or difficult. So, let's start with questions with did. When forming questions in the past tense with any verb that is not the verb to be, we can follow this formula. WH word plus did plus subject plus verb in the present plus complement. This is the case of our first three questions. Where did you grow up? When did you come to Los Angeles? Why did you become a hairstylist? First, we're going to add a WH word, where. Then we will include the auxiliary verb to form the question in the past, did. After that, we need to add the subject, you. Next, we include the verb in the present tense, grow up. Finally, we can add a complement. In this case, there is no complement. Towards the right-hand side of this chart, you can see how these questions are answered. If you notice, the verbs change to the past tense now because we're no longer adding an auxiliary verb. Let's move on to asking questions in the past tense with was or where. We will use this structure whenever we want to ask something using the verb to be. We can't say the following. Did you wear a good student? This is incorrect. To form questions in the past using was or where, we can follow this formula. WH word plus was or where plus a subject plus a complement. Let's break down an example from the chart. What was your major in college? First, we need to add the WH word, what. Then we need to add was or where. After that, we include the subject, your major. Finally, we need to add a complement and a question mark at the end in college. Now it's your turn to practice making WH questions with did, was, and where. Practice making similar questions such as the ones on this chart, but now focus on asking them about yourself or your family. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, what do you think about this? Was it uh, easy or difficult to understand this topic? Yeah. Easy, okay. So we're going to start by the first thing that we had there, which is the conversation. Let's listen and practice at home. I'll give you time. Remember, I'm going to stop the recording for you to be able to repeat after you hear. Page 102, Exercise 5, Conversation. I grew up in Texas. Listen and practice. So, Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. Were you born there? Yeah, I was born in Dallas. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 2000. How old were you then?
I was 18. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. Really? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money, and I love it. So, what do you think? Well, uh... Any questions about vocabulary or pronunciation? Mayor. What's a major? Major es como especialización. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other question? No more questions? Okay, I'm going to play the recording once again before you go to the breakout rooms and practice with your classmates. Page 102, Exercise 5, Conversation. I grew up in Texas. Listen and practice. So, Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. Were you born there? Yeah, I was born in Dallas. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 2000. How old were you then? I was 18. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. Really? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. And I love it. So, what do you think? Well, uh... Remember that you have this conversation in the PowerPoint presentation that I sent. So we're going to move and practice in the breakout rooms. You can also uh, take a screenshot if it is easier for you. You're more than welcome to do so. Let's see two breakout rooms. Let's practice in groups.
Okay, now do you practice a uh, so little pronunciation? This is the conversation that we already practiced and now we're going to go ahead and check the grammar that we already studied in the platform and in the previous lessons. So this is about combining the WH questions with did, was, and where that I think is not really complicated. Do you think it is? Is that easy? We're going to check. Remember that whenever we are not using a verb related with was and where, we're going to be using the auxiliary did plus the verb in the simple form for questions. And then when we are answering, giving that information, we'll probably need to uh, conjugate the verb into simple past. But when you're using the verb be in the past, meaning was or were, you're not going to use auxiliary did. Okay. So let's practice first with this exercise. We have here a couple of questions. And the answers are in the right hand side. So let's match them. The first one is already done for you. It says, where were you born? The answer is letter E in Hiroshima, Japan. Japan. Okay. Mm -hmm. You will do the same with the rest of the sentences. I'll give you uh, one minute for you to do the matching. You can do it in your notebook in case that you have not printed the material. Okay. Have you finished? I finished. Okay, can you give us the, read the question and the answer for the number two, please, Luis? Number two is uh, uh, letter uh, D. Uh, mm -hmm. Where do you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Tokyo. Excellent, thank you so much, Luis. Marvin, okay. number three. Um, how was your first day of school? Uh, letter F. It was a little scary. Uh huh. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you so it, much, Marvin. It was Eduardo. a little scary. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Eduardo, number four. Salvador. Gustavo. Number four, um, who was your first friend in school? Letter A, her name was Yumiko. Excellent, thank you so much. Angelica, can you continue with number five? 
What was she like? Excellent. Uh -huh. Letter B. She was really friendly. Excellent. That is the answer. Thank you so much. Let's see number six. Luis, do you have the number six? Okay. Uh, number six. Where do you take this class? I want to improve my English. I wanted to improve my English. Very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That is correct. Any questions about this exercise? No, no questions. No question. Improve. Improvisar. Improve is mejorar. Uh, mejorar. Okay. Uh -huh. I wanted to improve my English. Quería mejorar mi inglés. Mi inglés. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, you're more than welcome. Now, in, um, we're going to answer first these questions and we are going to um, use years in the um, answers. Vamos a responder esas preguntas usando años, eh, mencionando años. Recuerden que los años en algunas ocasiones se puede dividir en dos cifras. Por ejemplo, ahí tienen el primero, que es 1906. Podríamos decir tal cual, ¿verdad? 1906 y hacerlo 1906. Pero es más fácil, más práctico. En este caso lo podemos hacer así, dividir en dos cifras. 1906. Acuérdense que el cero se pronuncia O cuando estamos diciendo años o números de teléfono, direcciones, etc. So, in this case, the example says 1906. Uh, same here with 1986. Igual podríamos decir 1986, 1986. Pero es más fácil dividirlo en dos, 1986. Ahora, con 2000, solamente lo podemos decir así junto, porque pues no podemos decir 2000. At that's weird. So, in this case, it's 2000. Luego, con los que restan, ¿verdad? 2001, 2002, 2003. Podemos hacerlo de, de esa manera que está ahí. Son dos. Una usando and. Y también se puede omitir ese and. Por eso está en paréntesis, no es necesario. Pero si lo menciona o lo quita, it doesn't hurt. So, you can do it either or. It says 2001 or oh, 2001. Next example, you can say in three different ways. You can say 2010 or 2010 or 2010. Uh, questions here? No. Okay, thank you so much for replying. So we can answer the questions that we have here. Number one, where were you born? Number two, when was your father born? Number three, when was your mother born? Number four, when did you turn 13? Number five, when did you start high school? Number six, when did you begin to study English? So let's answer these questions with your own information and I'm going to give you time. Before that, you have any question about this? Teacher, in the question number six, it's about year or, or month, for example. You can mention just a month and, and say, for example, I started to study English in January this year, for example. Lo oh, puede okay. hacer así, solo mencionando el mes, 
Pero igual, ¿verdad? Podemos practicar los años que serían, a lo mejor en algunos casos he notado que como que es un poco difícil mencionar años. Así que pues podemos aprovechar y hacerlo. Pero lo puede hacer de cualquier forma. Ok, thank you. Y you're welcome. Have you finished? Yes, teacher. Okay, a uh, volunteer for number one. Where were you born? Me? Okay, thank you, Liz. Yeah. ¿Debo decir toda la oración o solo el año? I was born, toda la, ah, es okay. completa, ajá. Uh -huh. I was born in, in 1984. Okay, excellent, Liz, thank you so much. So you were born in 1984. So let's continue, Luis. Can you ask the question number two to someone else in the group? Uh, Angelica. 
Hello. When, when, ah, perdón. Okay. When, when was your father born? My father born, my father was born in 197. Okay, sería one thousand. One thousand, sorry, sorry, one thousand ninety seven. Um, sería como mil, mil noventa y siete. One thousand ninety seven. No. No, no. Ah, Mil novecientos. 79. Ah, Correcto. entonces faltaba el 900. 1,979. 1,979. Ajá, excelente. Thank you, Angelica. Can you continue and ask the number three to someone else in the group? Uh, Marvin. Okay. When was your mother born? Uh, my mother was born in the 1960. Okay, excellent. Marvin, can you ask okay. the number four to someone else? Um, no se fue Gustavo. Gustavo? No está. No está. No. All right, se desconectó. Mm -hmm. Salvador. No está. Eduardo. O Angélica. Angélica. Um, Wendy. Wendy, you born. <laughs> Uh, calculator. I can say like a calculator. You turn 13. Oh, um, I mean, oh, for Dios. <laughs> <laughs> and 2009. Okay, I turn. I, I'm turn 13. 13. 13. And. and 2000, 2009. Okay, excellent. Okay. Thank you so much, Angelica. Can you ask the next question to someone else? Y si no, seguimos los mismos todos porque los demás no sé si están o no están. Um, Luis. Okay. When did you start high, high school? I started. Uh, I was start high school. I started seeing it was. Uh, I started uh, high school in 2000. Okay, good, Luis. Now, the last question. You can ask the last question to someone else. Uh, Marvin? Okay. Okay. Where do you. Where do where did you begin to study English? In the twenty twenty two. Okay, I began to study English. I in... began to study English in the twenty twenty two. Excellent! You yeah. did a very good job. Thank you so much for participating. Okay. You can continue doing exercises like this one. Pueden hacer más preguntas similares a esas para que sigan practicando el pues mencionar años, fechas. And then, ya, yeah, ya casi terminamos la plataforma. Nos falta el Word Power School Days. Vamos a ver este vocabulario que es acerca de los días de clase, ¿verdad? Para, como para recordar y también practicar un poco de pronunciación. Okay. Ay, Salvador, qué envidia. 
Trabajando, dice. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Ya. Para estar ahí con los americanos míos practicando. Bueno, ok. Let's continue here. Ok, I'm going to share the platform. But it's just kind of complicated. The internet is so slow today. But yes, I'm here and work powered school days. We're going to practice. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary for discussing school. Let's get started by listening and practicing. Classes. History. Math. Physical education. Science. Schools. College. Elementary. High. Junior high. Places. Classroom. Gym. Lunchroom. Playground. Now, I would like for you to do a couple of things. First, I would like for you to categorize the vocabulary into three different sections. Classes, schools, and places. For example, under places, you can add classroom. Then, I would like for you to ask and answer questions in the past using the vocabulary that we just learned. For example, where did you go to elementary school? What were your favorite subjects in high school? Try to make as many questions and answers as possible. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, what we already saw there was the exercise about the word power, and we have something similar here. Casi que tenemos las mismas eh, palabras en el word power, y solo es de irlas clasificando into see if they are classes, kind of schools, or places. We have cafeteria, classroom, college, computer lab, Elementary school, high school, history, junior high school, library, math, physical education, and science. I'll give you some minutes for you to complete the map, classifying this word into these three categories.
Finish. Yes, teacher. Okay, what do you have in the classes category, Marvin? Um, class category is the history. History. Math. Math, okay. Physical education. And science. Excellent, thank you so much. That is correct. Okay. Now, okay. Angelica, do you, what do you have in schools? Um, computer lab. Ah, mm. uh, 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 uh. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Classrooms. Classroom. That's it ah. for places. Eso serían la categoría de lugares, Angelita, or es um, or la de schools. ¿Cuál quiere leer? No sé. Um, la de place. Oh, places. Okay, go mm -hmm. ahead. Um, classroom. Um, computer lab. Computer lab. Mm -hmm. Computer lab. Um, library. Um, in caf cafeteria. And cafeteria. Excellent. Yes, you mentioned all of them. Excellent job. Thank you so much. Uh, Luis, do you have schools category? Okay. Uh, college, elementary school, high school, junior high school. Excellent. Very well done. Now, uh, to finish with the section number five, we have the reading. Let us take a look at it. This is a reading about Ricky Martin. And with this, we finish the section number five. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll develop skills in scanning, reading for specific information, and sequencing events. Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico on December 24, 1971. He was always a performer. As a child, he appeared in television commercials and studied singing. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band Menudo. He worked hard with them, and he became very well known. But he left the group after five years. Martin moved to New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated, so he moved to Mexico City and got a part on a Mexican soap opera. Soon afterward, he recorded two Spanish-language albums. After this success, he moved back to the U.S., Back in the U.S., he appeared on an American soap opera and in the Broadway show Les Miserables. Then he made his first English-language album. That album was called Ricky Martin. His biggest hit, Livin' La Vida Loca, was on that album. Now he's famous around the world, but he still works hard, and he still loves singing. As he said to a reporter for the newspaper USA Today, I want to do this forever. That album. Well, let's see, after this reading, you have a, maybe a sequencing exercise in the platform, but before discussing it, I would like to know if you have any question about this reading, maybe vocabulary or pronunciation. He 
Upgrade in television. Upgrade. Appeared. As a child, appeared. Ajá, ese sería un D sound at the end, lo que discutíamos en la clase anterior. Mm -hmm. Appeared. Excellent. Appeared. Uh -huh. As a child, okay. he appeared in okay. television commercial and started singing. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other question? Questions of the person after war. You recorded to Spanish language. I think after it. Teacher, soon afterward. Luego después. Soon afterwards is luego después. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other question before we finish? Yeah, it said that he was part in a Mexican soap opera. Which one was it? Do you know which soap opera was it? <laughs> Novela. Yeah, but I didn't see it. Aquí dice que estuvo en una novela mexicana. Mm. Los no. Miserables? No. Oh, really? No, I, I, know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't watch soap operas, but I don't know which one was it. So uh, that would be it for today. And tomorrow we will make a review. Prepare your questions. Preparen sus preguntas para lo que quisieran repasar o reforzar el día de mañana. Y también este, para discutir los ejercicios de la plataforma. Si todavía falta de resolver ejercicios o si es algo relacionado con el examen. Eso se va a discutir el día de mañana y se daría por finalizado ya su uh, módulo básico 3. Así es que pues eh, ya están a una clase nada más. And that will be it for today. I hope that you sleep well and see you around. Okay, teacher. See you. See you. Take Bye. care. Bye. 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 Bye.